simply how heavy is Novak's racket? So your options are, you'll probably, you'll probably know this one based on the answers. Mm. 305 grams, 315 grams, 341 grams, or 353 grams. Yeah, I think 315. I'm going to go with that. That sounds sensible. I'd be surprised if it were heavier and there'd be no point in it being lower. You need to get a grip. It is actually 353 grams. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. And that's actually gone down recently. It was even as high as 358. So that is pretty pretty damn heavy let's think about the the weight of the racket that you might be using at your club generally as an adult it's probably going to be around 300 maybe a little bit less yeah maybe a little bit more and this is a full 50 grams heavier than that which is kind of insane really um but it kind of links in also to the kind of the style of game maybe that novak's playing he's he plays a little bit flatter he's not really trying to generate lots of topspin in his game so he doesn't need to necessarily swing through as quickly to generate the same amount of pace but um generally i would (laughs) advise to have a lighter racket certainly if you're kind of in more beginner intermediate stage if you want to have a little bit of control over the ball well, it matches with his return style, right? Because he takes that short swing. The heavier your racket is, the more momentum you're going to gain behind the ball on a shorter swing uh, to then really punch through uh, and get some momentum into it. Um, yeah, crazy. I, if you're not playing tennis regularly, don't touch a racket that's that heavy. Uh, if you're if you're just starting tennis, don't go above 300 grams. Uh, all of these things are very important because ultimately, if you start tennis, you probably want to keep playing it. Um, and if you're not properly conditioned for it, swinging your racket X amount of times, um, it, it can cause it can cause the injury that way. You got to remember, if you see someone at the gym, or, or maybe you yourself doing this as well, if you lift a dumbbell, you'll lift. God, say you lift 10 kilos. Yeah, not too bad. Say you lift 10 kilos. How many times would you lift that? Uh, I don't know. Is it a bicep curl? <laughs> yeah, just a bicep curl. Say you lift your 10 kilo bicep curl. 15 times? 15 times, okay. 15 times 10. You know, that that's pretty much the, the cumulative weight that you have lifted in that session. Now think about your tennis racket, 300 grams. How many times do you hit the ball? in a tennis session hundreds of times at least exactly exactly so you realize that you're actually lifting a heavy heavy amount of weight through your arm so it's very important to remember it like that and obviously yeah the force will be greater when you actually make contact with the ball than just that yeah. weight of the racket through the resistance and the speed that you're hitting it with yeah so i think generally a lighter racket is is advisable and again if you're trying to like linking back to the previous question if you're trying to then develop a little bit more top spin this is also going to help you with that because ultimately you want to be loose and enable that racket to come Mm. through quickly. And you'll probably, you might notice if you've done a little bit of research, Nadal, Alcaraz, et cetera, their rackets are generally a lot lighter. They're down Mm. more towards that 300 end so that it enables them to generate more topspin. But there you go. It's a, can be a personal preference thing, but try and stick to the, the lower end in terms of weight, especially if you don't play as much. Hey there, tennis friends. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that episode, then you might want to click here for this one. See you there.